the belief that I'm not good enough, bound by the limitations and the lies that consumed my world, this was me. It wasn't until I took the biggest leap in my life to know and trust the power within. And it was at that moment I made a choice. My past will not define me anymore. Hello, I am Terry Cardula, and I know I am not alone in this. Over the years, I have found that the number one mistake that we make is that we get in the way of our own success story. Yes, I said it. On this show, together we'll tackle limiting beliefs, self-sabotage, getting stuck, fear, doubt, overwhelm, and the imposter syndrome. Join us on this journey designed to transport you beyond your limitations to a world where anything is possible. This is Talking with Terry. Hello, and welcome back to Talking with Terry, where we have powerful conversations to transform your life and your business. And I'm delighted to have our guest on today, her, her um, Nikki Rausch. She is the CEO of Sales Maven. Nikki has a unique ability to transform the, and understand the process of selling, which I know we can all relate to. With 25 plus years of experience selling to prestigious organizations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and NASA. She's also the author of three sell, um, best-selling books, the, the Selling Staircase, six, words, six Word Lessons in Influencing with Grace, and then Buying Signals, which are all available online. So go check those out as well. Um, and she also has a podcast and she's the host of Sales Maven. Nikki, welcome to the show. Thank you, Terry. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. So let's dive in because okay. I, 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 when I see successful people walk in the walk, you know, I am always inspired. And I think sometimes we think we look at folks and we say, gosh, you know, they just, they were born into this. They just had the right situation. And really I haven't found a person yet that has not had some challenge barrier or block that they've had to overcome. Yeah. So, you know, share with us how you got to be where you're at today. And then let's go into this a little bit deeper. Okay. Well, so if you, if you look at like, how did I really get here is I was raised by my dad. I have three brothers. My dad is a misogynist, like legitimately does not like women, doesn't think highly of women. And so I was raised in this environment to be very pleasant in order to get along. I was supposed to smile all the time. I was supposed to be happy, no complaining and you know, all of that fast forward, you know, taking that into my career, um, in sales, I found that, okay, so I had the ability to build relationships. I was, I was good with, um, you know, some communication stuff, but I was in a very male dominated industry. As a matter of fact, I was the only female sales rep in the last 10 years of my career. Um, I only worked with one other female for less than a year, like on the sales team. So I came, came from this male dominated home life to this male dominated industry. And I just knew that I couldn't really sell like the guys, like it just didn't fit my style. And so I started studying neuro-linguistic programming. And so that's NLP for, you know, anybody who knows that. And it's really the study of communication. And I started studying it because I thought it'll make me better at sales. It'll make me a better communicator. And it definitely did. And it allowed me to kind of find my own way about building relationships. And then the selling got easier. And so when I decided to start Sales Maven, you know, eight years ago now, the idea was taking a combination of all the success that I'd had in my sales career, combining it with my skill set in neuro linguistic programming, and teaching people how to have more effective sales conversations. So that's kind of my, my story and how I got yeah. here. So, what was the biggest kind of challenge that you had to overcome, you know, during? you know, during that transition from, you know, into your cells, into where you're doing, you know, obviously you're working for yourself and you have your own yeah. company yeah. that's flourishing. Like how, what was the biggest challenge that you had to overcome? Well, you know, and I, I know you talk about this stuff. A lot of this was like mindset stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like I remember having a conversation where I never planned to have my own business. <laughs> like that seemed, cause I came from a corporate background. I love the benefits of corporate. I mean, I had I kind of had a sweet job in that, you know, I made over six figures. I had the company car. I was taking big trips all the time. And, you know, I kind of had that, like, I will say from the outside, all of my friends and family were like, you're living the dream. Right. 
So when I went to start my own business and really I never intended to start it, it was a friend of mine who I'd been helping kind of coaching her a little bit on the side around sales. Cause she was struggling to really amplify her sales. And I knew it was because she didn't really understand how to recognize buying signals, how to invite people to next steps and like these really simple things. And I really was just doing it because I liked her and I, I knew how to do this. I wanted to help her do it. And she said to me, like, Nikki, why aren't you teaching this to women? Like they need to know these skills. And my instant response was nobody's going to pay me money to do this. Yeah. It seems so simple. And, yeah. and I was like, that would be stupid. Nobody would pay me money for this. Well, yeah. you know, there was some mindset stuff I had to get over there and turns out that people do in fact pay me money to teach them <laughs> how to have more effective sales conversation. And it's like the best job in the world now. Well, and I think there's a lot of listeners that could, that are listening right now that, you know, kind of stumbled into, if you will, their mm -hmm. own you know, entrepreneurial journey yeah. by literally, you know, having people come up to them with exactly the same. Right. And so I don't think we always, um, realize I was the same way. I didn't realize that I was going to go into entrepreneurship. Now, when I look back at my play, it's ironic that I had like three different businesses uh -huh. by the age of like nine. And I had all these little businesses. My sister was my, you know, either my secretary or she was my <laughs> assistant or like, like, but I had all these businesses and now I'm like, okay, and that, clearly I was kind of like, you know, I don't know, driven to like go into entrepreneurship, but who knew, right? Like, yeah. who knew? and yeah. you're right. And, and I will, I will be the first to admit that like, you know, yes, mindset is so crucial to the selling process. Yes. I don't think people realize sometimes we compartmentalize like, oh, well, okay, I can keep my stuff over here and then I can show up and, and it all mindset impacts every single aspect of every single aspect of our business and our mm -hmm. life, in my opinion. Yes. And so if we don't have that really figured out, it can directly impact us on our sales. So my first question to you is, you know, um, how was your mindset impacting the way initially when you were selling? Well, it was always this, like, I felt like I had to do it like somebody else in order to be successful. And it just didn't work. Right. Because that wasn't my style, you know, that really, you know, and again, I come from this very male dominated industry and there was that, like, you know, they would have these conversations of like, you know, I'm an elephant hunter. I go out and I get the big, I kill the big, you know, the big game. And like, I never wanted to kill anything and I didn't want to go <laughs> hunting. And, you know, so it was this whole thing about like, it just didn't fit my personality to be this like aggressive person. And so I think at first I thought, well, I'll never, I'll never, you know, get there. I'll never get there and I'll never be able to sell like somebody else. And this is actually now, you know, very much what I teach people is I'll never teach you how to sell like me because selling like me isn't necessarily going to work for you unless we have a very similar kind of attitude about, you know, or kind of mindset really about how we show up in rooms. What I will do is teach you how to have more effective conversations that allow for your own style to come through. And I also teach a lot around, and this is one of my all time favorite quotes is blessed are the flexible for they shall not be bent out of shape. Yeah. I've heard that before. Oh, fantastic. So I teach a lot of flexibility. How can you be flexible and how can you have real conversations with people? So learning how to shift from you know, I'm just here. I, I think this is the other thing. And I talk about this a lot is I kind of came up in my sales career with this attitude as, and this was kind of the mindset of the companies I worked for was sales was something you were supposed to do to somebody else. And I now teach, you know, sales is actually something you do with people. So you don't need to talk at people. You need to talk yeah. with and when yeah. you can start having real conversations, so much easier, frankly, to earn somebody's business and do it in a way that builds long-term relationships. So guess who they're going to come back to when they, they need whatever it is that you offer. Again, they're going to come back to you because you built the relationship with them. Yes. So that was a long answer to your question. Well, and I think that's, that's so key because when we can stay in our authentic self and mm -hmm. we know the questions and we're not reading from a quote sales script or yeah you know, we can really, you know, engage in that conversation and, 
you know, lead that conversation to where it needs to go. Um, mm-hmm. It just is, and, and we're stepping into our own style and personality. It is, it's so much more authentic. And I just, I truly, I truly believe that when we're authentically showing up in ourselves, it is an energy that we put off and people mm-hmm. feel that. I mean, yes. they know when we're trying to push, they know when we're coming from a place of scarcity, they know when we come from a place of abundance, they know when we're coming from a place of service, you know, they feel it, mm-hmm. you know, and just like we feel it on the other end, you know, from other folks that we've, you know, you know, again, like those, um, you know, uh, just kind of the miss the misnomers that we have around like, you know, sales has to be sleazy and yeah. sales has to be salesy and sales yeah. has to be yucky. And, you know, it can honestly be a really great experience. And I know that um, sometimes when I go to events or something and it's interesting, I love, I love watching people. Okay. Yeah, me too. But I love watching and taking in kind of like what's happening in the room while the person goes into sales mode. Right. And I'll back that up and say that when someone is selling something, usually it's, they're selling it from the, the moment that they open their mouth, right? They're, mm. they're softly educated. It's just like this beautiful dance, right? Yes. And when people ex- execute it well, it is beautiful to watch. And so I agree. oftentimes I will like, people will, like leave the room, like, oh, she's going into her pitch. I'm like, well, she's been pitching for like the last hour, but I won't let you know that that's what she was doing. But I was like, you know, I'm sitting here taking I'm taking copious notes because I just find it super fascinating when it's executed well, you yeah. know? Yeah. When it feels, you know, there has to be, both people have to be engaged in the conversation and that's whether you're on stage speaking to a group, you mm-hmm. know, or whether you're writing an email to somebody, you know, this is one of the things that I talk about a lot is that, you know, one of the big mistakes that people often make is like they send emails two people and they'll say like, Hey everyone. And they talk to everyone. Well, I don't know about you, but I've never, ever read my email in a group setting ever. So it's like, (laughs) stop talking to everyone. And even if you're at the front of the room on a stage, it should feel like a conversation between you and the person that's sitting there. Like each person should feel a connection in some way that it's not like, oh, here's this person that's just like word vomiting all over me because that's gross. And that is salesy. Yeah. Instead, it's like, is there some conversation? Do they feel engaged? And this is how I always know, like, okay, I've hit the mark here is people will come up and have very personalized responses to my emails. Even when I send it to my whole list, they still respond as if it was one email from me to them directly. That's like a home run for me. Or when I'm on stage and people come up and they're like, you, I just felt like you gave that presentation for me today. I did. I did. Mm -hmm. It was for you. Yeah. It's so powerful. So what would you say are some of the um, biggest challenges that you see clients getting themselves in the way of, you know, the sales process? And really, because again, sales is a, is a, is one aspect of having a business, Mm -hmm. but if we don't have sales, we don't have a business. It's true. You have a hobby. (laughs) You have a hobby. And, um, I remember working with this client, um, not too long ago and she was working with a sales coach and I know the sales coach and she does great stuff. I love the way she, I love her philosophy. I love the way she works with folks. I mean, I really, as another, um, colleague, I just, I put her in high regard And this person came to me and she's like, and I said, she's been working with this person for nine months. And I go, I'm curious, like how many sales calls have you had? Like, you know, she goes, well, let me ask you, take a guess. How many sales calls do you think she had? Well, in nine months, I'm hoping quite a few. (laughs) Um, Sadly to say zero. Why? Why no sales calls? I know that's what I was like, what? So like, so wait, like, wait, what? And so she's like, I'm just so afraid. Mm. I'm so afraid that if I hop on these calls, A, I'm not going to know what to say, but B, I will actually sell something and C, I'll actually grow my business. And if Mm. I grow my business, then I'm going to be seen. And then if I grow my business and be seen, then people will say, well, you know, who do you think you are? Mm. You know? And so it just grew into this big, hairy thing. Yep became so overwhelming. And so I don't know if she was lying to the coach because if I was the other sales coach, I would be like, what the heck? Like, yeah, what's going on? We need to be like, it's nine months. Like, you know, we should be having, some people will say, you know, 20 calls a week, you know, or, you know, strategic, but maybe if it's more strategic, it might be five calls a week or depending on what you need and what you, 
what your, what your targets are for your right. sales right. story. So it could be yeah. very, it could, it could be one call a month. You know, I have a client that has very high end, you know, her sales is from, you know, 25,000 a person to 125,000 a person. So she only requires like six clients a year yeah. for what she's doing. And so it's right. very different sales cycle and stuff, but it was interesting because I think, and, and some of my listeners right now, this could be you that we're talking about as far as, you know, just being afraid to step out of there and to be afraid to, you know, really do the mindset work that's required to get in alignment because I just, this is my own personal opinion, but right now on our planet, um, I believe we have a responsibility, a responsibility to know what our gifts are. Mm-hmm. and really step into the power of that and bring it to the fruition because more, no more, you know, there's no more waiting, you know, for the for perfect time. Like we yeah. need you now. We need yeah. people stepping into their power because in my, in my, you know, bigger picture, you know, from an energetic perspective is when we have people stepping into their power, they're get, delivering their gifts. We're having a bigger p- impact on the world from a collective consciousness. Like we get to raise the vibrations of the planet with people stepping into their power. So folks, Agree. let's do this. Yes. <laughs> let's do this. Yeah. So I think back to your question, like one of the biggest challenges oftentimes is this idea of judgment. I'm going to be judged. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, here's a possible reframe in this moment is you're right. You are going to be judged. They say that in the first like 30 seconds or something, people can make up to, uh, it's like 10 judgments about you, right? So yes, you're going to be judged. That's going to happen whether you put yourself out there or not. Yes. So how can you set yourself up to make a powerful first impression? Well, you have some skill set around what you're doing and you stop thinking about what are they thinking about me? And are they going to you know, not like me if I sell them something? And instead you focus on the other person who will benefit from what it is that you offer and how can you deliver in a way and have a conversation in a way that is satisfying to them and opens the opportunity for them to take the next step. I teach that the sales process involves issuing invitations every step of the way. So I teach a a five-step process to selling called the selling staircase. I wrote a book about it. And the idea is that on each step, you invite people to go with you. And when you think about an invitation, for instance, and this is why I teach this is imagine that your neighbor is going to throw like a party, a holiday party or a block party or whatever it is. And they invite everybody in the neighborhood, but they don't invite you. Are you going to feel left out? Now you might get the invitation and think, oh, it's not for me. I don't want to go. That's okay. But it still feels nice to be invited, right? Like Nobody wants to be excluded. And what people oftentimes don't realize is that when you don't offer your services to somebody who would benefit, if you don't issue that invitation, they walk away feeling unsatisfied. They might walk away and make up a story like, oh, Nikki doesn't think I'm the right kind of client for her or, oh, Nikki doesn't like me or, and I know these because people tell me these stories all the time about like, oh, so-and-so, you know, didn't ask me for my business. And so this happened or that happened. I never want people to walk away from a conversation with me feeling unsatisfied. My goal actually is always for them to feel somewhat elevated or better about having a conversation with me, whether they become a client or not. Like what you're talking about, about raising the vibration and putting this good energy into the world. Like I do want to make an impact with people, a good positive impact. Therefore it is my job that if I am have permission to talk to somebody about ways that I might be able to help them in some way or support whatever it is that they, you know, have going on, I feel like I owe that to them and to the world to at least issue the invitation and they can decline. Yeah. And that's okay. That's a great way of reframing. And, and actually reframing is a technique. It mm-hmm. is, you know, based in psychology, it's a great reframe. And so what you just did was reframe that. And I think that's a great way of looking at it, of looking at it as I'm going to invite everyone. Mm-hmm. And if they want to come to the party, great. If they yeah. don't, that's okay too. You know, at least they're not feeling left out, you know, cause yeah. how, I mean, exactly. We, we get our, our feelings hurt if we weren't invited to come and play. And now we that's get right. And I believe we have personal choice. So then it's, it's on us to make the choice, right? So that's a beautiful way to reframe that. So for folks that are listening, oh my heavens, start playing with this and looking at it from this perspective, 
instead of, you know, the way in which we're like, okay, I got to go find my people and only mm-hmm. invite those, you know, those people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The more the merrier. Yeah. And it's totally okay. You know, if, and so another way just to give like one more little tangible example about this is imagine that you go out and you have a really beautiful meal, you know, at at your favorite restaurant. And then the waiter or waitress comes by and says, can I show you the dessert menu? And you say, oh, I couldn't possibly, I'm, I'm full, but thank you so much. Maybe next time. Right. The waiter or waitress, they don't go back into the kitchen and be like, can you believe that broad? I offered her dessert. She totally rejected me. Right. No, it's not rejection. It's like they issued an invitation yeah. and asked permission, <laughs> frankly, if they could show me the dessert menu, I respectfully declined. We're still okay. Nobody yeah. got hurt. Nobody yeah. was rejected. It's just yeah. a simple, like, not, not today, not now. Yeah. And it's a conversation, right? It's a mm-hmm. conversation. And as long as we keep ourselves, you know, clear from, you know, putting in, creating stories, creating, you know, this little, like, you know, adding in other stuff and mm-hmm. just keeping it to what it is. It was a conversation. She asked, I said, no, and we're still okay. I yeah, love that. That's, okay. that's a great way of looking at it. And that's such a nugget for, for a lot of folks that are listening. Cause I think some t- so many times we feel like quote rejected mm-hmm. by someone saying no. And it's just, yeah. you know, and it could be no for right now. Yeah. Right? I would we say most no's that. are not yet. You know, yeah. You know, because as you know, and, and research was saying it around seven touches, you know, and now I think the research is closer to 14. Right. And so 14 touches before someone, you know, says yes. And so mm-hmm. again, if we can show up and be in a place of love and, you know, you know, receive that no for that time. And we, you know, respect that, Mm -hmm. um, who knows what is, you know, down the road, you know, one of my good friends, um, she talks sale about sales as a, as a courtship, you know, and you just, you know, sometimes you court people for, you know, six months, sometimes you court them for a month, sometimes you court them. And we were joking because I ended up becoming one of her clients at one point. And she's like, I courted you for three years. And I'm like, I know now I know, but I, at the time I thought you were just being kind, (laughs) you know? Yeah. You have to be there when the person is ready. But the thing is, is they don't always know when they're ready and you don't always know when they're ready. And the only way to know that is by issuing invitations along the way yes. and putting opportunities in front of them and allowing them to take next steps. That's really your job in sales, build relationships, be available, issue invitations. And you'll be so surprised at how often people will show up and be like, I'm so ready. And I didn't even know I was ready, but you asked me, let's go. Yes. Beautiful. I love this. Absolutely love this. So what can you leave the listeners with? Like, you know, do you have a quick tip, a tool or strategy that we can leave? I mean, you've already offered so much value, but let's put a little cherry on top today. Okay. So here's, so I talked about this invitation piece, right? So when you're in a conversation with a prospective client and you're getting buying signals, you've laid out a proposal. Here's one of the most missed steps is people forget to issue close language. And because they're like, hell, okay, well, I'll send you some information. You can look it over. Let me know if you're available or if you want to, you know, take the next step with me. That's not good enough. You have to actually get closed language out of your mouth. Closed language is usually in the form of a yes or no question. And it's a direct question that can be said in a really kind way. So for instance, I've talked about ways we might work together. You've seemed interested. You say, hey, Nikki, send me a proposal on that or send me, send me an email kind of outlining what that would look like. And I'm going to say to you, great, absolutely. I'll send that over to you later today. And then let's schedule a circle back call just to review it, answer any questions that you have, and then talk about next steps for working together. Then I'm going to get on a call with you, make sure you, you know, got it that you, what questions do you have? And then I'm going to say, is this something you'd like to move forward on? Like, I'm going to ask you a very direct question. And if you're not asking these very direct closed questions, oftentimes people won't make a decision to hire you. Yes or no, because frankly, most of us are overwhelmed with decisions and we only make the ones that are put right in front of our face in the moment. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. What a great way to kind of wrap that up. Okay. So Nikki, this has been absolutely delightful. Where can people find more information about you? 
Well, the easiest way I'm going to wrap around a gift to, for your listeners. I yeah, have an ebook. We love gifts. We love okay, gifts. Go. I do too. I love like, just gift giving. So ladies. Oh, I love that. Gift. That's your love it. <laughs> All right. So I have an ebook called closing the sale. And it kind of talks through these last three steps of the selling staircase that I teach, give some language suggestions. You can get that by going to your sales maven and maven is M A V E N.com and then forward slash Terry. So this is just for your listeners, your sales maven.com okay, forward slash Terry. Let's send Nikki some love. Okay. Let's send some Nikki, some love, love to Nikki. Okay. And then Nikki, where can folks find you on um, your website? That's your sales maven.com. We'll be connected at that point. You'll be on Perfect. the website. Yeah. So, yeah. So go check her information out. Go grab the free freebie because I don't know about you, but I am going to go grab it too, because here's you. the thing. Um, I, I have, I love sales. I love learning about sales and I can, I can never get enough. Yeah. And so even if you've done all the sales programs, you've done this, it's a new way of a perspective. And for me, sometimes I kind of like, I like to take what works, like you were talking about, like your, like mm-hmm. your authentic sales you know, way you show up and do sales, mm-hmm. take it and, and weave it into what you're already doing. Because I just feel like, you know, their knowledge is knowledge, you know, yeah. knowledge is power. So go grab yeah. your free copy, um, support Nikki in that way. And Nikki, thank you so much. Thank you for, you know, really, you know, allowing and, and, and stepping into your power, because as you do this, obviously you're giving permissions for permission for other people to build their businesses in a, in a really powerful way. And I think that's what we need right now. So thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. I am so grateful that you joined me for this episode. If you've enjoyed this, then there's just one thing that I would like you to do. Click to subscribe and leave me a rating and review. As my way to thank you, let's connect for a free consultation. Just reach out to me at talkingwithterry, that's T-E-R-I dot com to book your time.